Hello, zany friends, and welcome to this week's edition of our podcast. You betcha. Slash. And this week we are talking about the books we are most excited about in 2021. Please keep in mind that the dates we are giving you in this video slash podcast, though, are not necessarily what they will officially be. A lot of times I've seen that the book releases do get moved around, so this is just what we are given at the time that we are doing this recording. All right, let's start with the month of January. Yeah, sure. So one of the ones that we found, uh, wasn't really expecting to find this one either, is a book called A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. And this book is the story of the Trojan War, but it's from the perspective of all the women that the war was fighting over and around and on top of. It, it seems like a really interesting idea. Um, so we're looking forward to that. There's also The Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe and The World Between Blinks because Amy Kaufman hasn't gotten enough out of us. Correct. Yeah. What about you? For January, I have quite a bit of books. The first one is called Bedazzled. It's by Ryan LaSala. He wrote Reverie, which I did read earlier this year. It is being described as a Project Runway meets Comic-Con type of book, so I'm excited for that. Okay. I also have a book called Lore by Alexandra Bracken. It's kind of like Greek Gods in New York. I did receive okay. a copy to review already. But I haven't gotten around to reading it yet, so that will be happening. As well as A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kammerer, which is one that I am going to be reading very shortly here so that I can finish the trilogy. And Across the Green Grass Fields by Sean and McGuire, which is number six. We have already read and reviewed mm -hmm. this book, even though it's coming out in January, and liked it. Number seven in this series, which is called Where the Drowned Girls Go, is actually coming out January of 2022. So if you are a big fan of the Wayward Children series, that is when the next one is coming out. Well, 2022 is when the next one's coming out? Well, yes, considering oh. the first one, the next one is coming out in 2021. Oh. Yeah. So I'm going to have to wait so long. <laughs> All right. If you liked the book Meet Cute by Emma Lord, you might also like You Have a Match, which is about how a sister does a DNA test to see if the guy that she's kind of crushing on is like a good like match for her or something. But then she ends up finding out that she has a sister and they decide they're going to meet up at a summer camp. I think it sounds fun and cute. Yeah. And then there is a book called Concrete Rose. It is the third book by Angie Thomas, and she wrote The Hate You Give. And I don't know a lot about this one either, but, you know, I really do like the author. Uh, then I have Enjoy the View. This is the third book in a series. The first one is Tourist Attraction. The second one is Mistletoe and Mr. Wright. They're all by Sarah Morgenthaler. I have only read the second one, but the third one does also seem interesting because it's about a actress who has been charged to do a documentary and she travels to do a documentary about the town and Easton, who is a character that we've seen in the other books, is basically her person that she meets and, you know, starts crushing on. So, yeah, that, <laughs> that one that one sounds cute as well if you've read the other two. Okay. All right, February, what you got? I have A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Moss. Do we really need to talk about any more of this? It's yeah. book number four, and it's about Nessa. So, yeah, we're excited for that. Yeah. The Project by Courtney Summers. Now, Courtney Summers wrote Sadie, which is one of the first few books that I read when I was doing this just getting into reading stint. And it was amazing. Mm -hmm. So I really want to see what the project is all about. So basically it is about a girl and her parents die and her sister starts becoming involved in a charity project corporation, but apparently it's very nefarious. And so this girl has been trying to uncover the secrets of the project. Cool. The last one on my list for February by Kami Garcia is Teen Titans Beast Boy Loves Raven. So I've already read the Teen Titans Beast Boy and the Teen Titans Raven stories, and I liked them. They were really nice introductions to the character. And then I see this and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to. <laughs> they are like the most adorable couple in DC. If you if you disagree, fight me. The, they are the most adorable couple. So I had to see, I have to see this. One. one other book that I have is The Burning Girls, and that's by C.J. Tudor, who also wrote The Other People. It is basically a story about how there's a site 
with all these martyrs that got burned at the stake. And then this father and son or father and daughter maybe come to the site and then there start being like more disappearances at the site. And so they're trying to figure out what is happening with the whole thing. So that's what okay. The Burning Girls is about. Okay. March, I have four books. The first one is Act Your Age, Eve Brown. It's by Talia Hibbert. It's the third book in the series about, like, Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I and, thought so. Yeah. I saw that on Goodreads, and I'm like, hey, that, that's got a similar feel to... Is that... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about the third sister. I do have Take a Hint, Polly Brown, I think is it, and I have that one ready to read. I just haven't had a chance to read it yet you know obviously there's a lot of other things happening but i probably will read it before the third book comes out another book is called her dark lies it's by jt ellison she also wrote good girls lie and i read that either last year or the year before i can't remember and for me the book sounds like it's like the guest list there's a wedding it's on an island it, it just has the same vibey feel to it so i'm kind of excited to read that because I really did like the author as well. Another book that's coming out in March is Namesake by Adrian Young. It's the second book of the Fable series. I have not read Fable yet either, but I do have it. And again, I'm going to read it probably in January. I am hoping to read that series too. Yes. Because even if it was just the, the front cover, the front cover art is gorgeous. It really is. And if you put the books together, they actually form like a cover of their own. It's really cool. So yes, I have them both on eBooks. I really wish I could get them physically because then I can put them together because I'm a nerd like that. But yeah. whatever. And the last book in March is called Every Vow You Break. And it's by Peter Swanson. He is the one who wrote Eight Perfect Murders. So that was okay. the one that was kind of like the ABC Murders. Uh, we read that together also. But his next one is Every Vow You Break. In April... I have listed The Gilded Girl by Alyssa Coleman. This is the story of a society where all children have magic, but the only ones that get to keep it after the 13th birthday are the nobility. And then you have this situation where there's a noble who doesn't really like her life and she wants to be a pauper for a while, live among the normal people. And you have a servant girl who wants to keep her magic. So they kind of work together to give each other what they both want. And it seems like it's going to be a really kind of cute story. I'm, I'm interested in it. So also in April, we have Box in the Woods by Maureen oh Johnson. Gosh. Where did that... Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson is the fourth book in the Truly Devious series. And we are excited for that. They're at camp. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. May. May. Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This is the same guy who wrote The Martian and Artemis. Both of them are very realistic scientific sci-fi stories that The Martian was surprisingly accurate to real life. Scientists found out later just how good it was. So I'm really interested in Project Hail Mary. For me, I have one last stop by Casey McQuiston. She also wrote Red, White, and World Blue, which was just okay for me. But the premise of this story sounds really interesting. This person falls in love with somebody on a subway and then realizes that they're stuck in a time loop from the 1970s. So they're trying to figure oh. out how to get them back. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I thought so too. I also have The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. This one sounds interesting to me in that not just because it's written by Christina Lauren, who I love, but also that it kind of reminds me a little bit of how The, the One by John Mars is. The main character takes a DNA test to determine who her soulmate is, which is very much like The One. But what's different is that it is more of a romantic comedy because she ends up being matched with the guy who's in charge of the genetic DNA matching company, who she already knows and can't stand. So <laughs> she's trying to figure out how she got paired with him. And then they have to go through all these other things like events and stuff together. So it sounds kind of funny to me. Uh, the other one that I have is called Malibu Rising and it's by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It is the story of a knight in this family of surfers. Apparently there's a party and then their mansion catches on fire. So it's a, it's an entire story about that night. Um, and I think it's like the 80s is when it takes place maybe. But it seems really like... Wow, that's fun. <laughs> when you said a knight in a family of surfers, 
I read that in my head as K N I G H T. I'm suddenly imagining this guy going around in plate armor on the back of a surfboard, which makes for a really <laughs> epic story by itself. You should write that. That'd be a graphic novel right there. Night of Waves. <laughs> okay, for the month of June, I have a book called Royally Tied. It is by Melanie Summers. She has that whole series that I just finished reading called Royally Crushed and Royally Wild about the princess who falls in love with the reality wilderness TV show celebrity. And this is the third book in the series. So I'm guessing they're going to get married based on the title. Either that or they suddenly get into really kinky things. Maybe they're repelling. Maybe. You never know. That, 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 I would actually believe that more. July. July, we have Survived the Night by Riley Sager. So exciting. So let me read you the premise because I bet you you didn't read it, did you? No. No, you're just like Riley Sager done. Mine. Okay, so it takes place in 1991 and a girl named Charlie is driving home. It's in November, so I'm guessing they're driving home for Thanksgiving or something with a guy that she knows from college named Josh. Now, maybe or maybe not, Josh might be a serial killer. Because there have been some murders happening at her college. So she then starts to fear that there are not a lot of things about Josh's story about what happened that night that actually make sense. So she starts to figure out that she might be in a car with a serial killer. I'm guessing maybe not. Because why would they tell us that in the synopsis? But yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Riley Sager has a really great habit of going, well, this is the story. Oh, but there's a twist that you really don't see coming. And there's no way you're going to see it coming, what they, even though you see it coming. What they do talk about in the summary that I thought was interesting is that, you know, it takes place in a lot of parking lots and places that are just out there that remind me a lot of like No Exit by Taylor Adams. But it's not in a time where cell phones are really prevalent. So she can only make calls if she finds a payphone. So there, that's the other that's thing about cool. surviving the night is that like because of the time period... It's not like she can just call someone for help, right? Excellent. Excellent. I also have Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. Half Sick of Shadows is a novelization of The Lady of Shalott. Mm, Right, right. Oh, I did not. And I saw that and I was like, okay, I think I kind of have to because I've spent enough time with Anne of Avonlea in my life that I kind of have to know some more about this. And I'm now... She, yeah, she's now adding that to I'm her list. I'm now writing it down, yes. The last book I have for July is The Therapist by B.A. Paris, who writes a lot of thrillers. I have liked some B.A. Paris books, but some not as much. So this is basically about a couple who moves into a home that used to be owned by a therapist and something happened in the house and nobody in the neighborhood will talk about it, but they start to uncover clues about what happens to the therapist. And that is why it's called that, obviously. Sounds interesting. Yeah. So I will tell you... The ones that we have for September, Defy the Night by Bridget Kammerer. She wrote the Curse Breaker series. She's starting a new series. But see if this sounds at all familiar to you, for those of us living in the now. It is a fantasy book, all right? Okay. But a disease wipes out citizens. The rich profit from the cure, whereas the unfortunate suffer from the disease. I've never heard of that happening You know, I don't know if there's like a lot of influence happening with this book series, but I don't care. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it sounds exactly like what we're going through right now in a country, really, but I think in a fantasy setting, this is going to be super, super interesting. The cure is like a flower, and it's like the things that they can get out of the flower is what helps with Mm -hmm. the disease. I'm there. I love her writing. I have another book by Melody Summers, only it's in a different series that she has, which is Paradise Bay, which I've read the first one of, and I need to read the other ones, but it's called Resting Beach Face. Ah, um. Um, there is no synopsis that I can find on Goodreads for this yet, but I don't care because I like the character in the series, so I'll read it. And the last one that I'm so excited about is called Under the Whispering Door. This is by TJ Klune who wrote The House on the Cerulean Sea, which okay. is amazing. And now I will read anything that this guy puts out. So basically, this the premise of the story is interesting, where this man is collected from his own funeral. And the Reaper brings him to a tea shop, where the guy who runs a tea shop, not only does he sell tea, but his job is to help souls move on into the afterlife. But while he's there, the main character starts to realize what he has really been missing from his life. And wants to live, even though he is dead, till one of the afterlife 
honchos, I can't remember what they call them, tell him he has a week to move on. So now he only has a week to get everything in that he has missed in his life before he has to pass on to his next life. Gotcha. So I, I think it's it sounds just really sweet and kind of very similar to House on the Cerulean Sea. Is it in the same universe? Do you know? I have no idea. No. So that's all the books that we have for 2021 that we're excited for. Of course, more will pop up. Yeah, we're going to definitely fill in that list more and more as we go as we just run across books. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of other books that I'm going to have to catch up on. Me too. I've actually started organizing all of my book series. Series? Series? Sirai? By month so that I can read the books that preface it before I get to that one. And plan it out for the month of 2021. So how many of you just had your iPhone suddenly go absolutely bonkers when we said Siri? Siri. Siri. <laughs> Tell me what I should read next. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to our our recording. And we hope that if you find other books that are not on our list, that you tell us. Because we might be interested in it. We might be finding mm-hmm. something new as well. Um, so make sure you comment and let us know. And yeah, until next time. Stay zady. Bye.